We've just worked through and studied chapter 9 of In Search of the Miraculous and much of the chapter speaks about hydrogens and has tables like this and also about the food diagram and contains diagrams such as this and it can be quite intimidating for someone who's new to the ideas contained in In Search of the Miraculous. It can be daunting and intimidating but we have to approach these things slowly uh, and with time and studies, maybe additional readings, we can come to understand them. But in this video, I'm not going to break down the table of hydrogens and the food diagram. But what I am going to speak about is something a little bit more practical that we can bring into our practice. And that is how to increase energy for self-remembering. So up to this point, Gurdjieff has spoken about this concept of self-remembering where we remember ourselves, we have dual attention, there's not only attention on the thing we're observing or experiencing but the thing um, on our own selves. So we remember ourselves as we receive an impression of whatever that might be. And now Gurdjieff moves on to speak about the energy necessary for self-remembering and this is in a sense a, a teaching regarding our daily conduct in life and the passage that I'm going to share with you comes from 179 in In Search of the Miraculous and is towards the latter half of chapter 9 if you want to go and listen to the whole chapter in, uh, in its context which I would always advise doing, take it um, as a whole and then go back to the section and so this is sort of a advice of, of how to live or more accurately of what not to do He's saying, if you do these things, if you indulge in these things, you will lose your energy. And by so losing that energy, you won't have the energy required for self-remembering. And if you've attempted self-observation or self-remembering at all, you will become aware that certain days I have a capacity for it. Other days it's impossible and I completely forget myself. And it's only at the end of the day that I realize, hey, there was no moments of awareness, no moments of self-remembering today and that's because likely you had some sort of emotional outburst or some sort of interior mental chatter that completely et up all of your energy and so there was none remaining. So I'm going to read this passage now, comment briefly and then at the end go through specifically each of what he, um, Gurdjieff, recommends we should avoid in order to increase our energy for our self-remembering. We come to the conclusion that we must remember ourselves, but we can remember ourselves only if we have in us the energy for self-remembering. We can study something, understand or feel something only if we have the energy for understanding, feeling or studying. What then is a man to do when he begins to realise that he has not enough energy to attain the aims he has set before himself? As I've just laid out in the introductory uh, part of this video, in life, if you haven't studied the Gurdjieff teachings or psychology or philosophy, you know, there are inner processes going on at all times within the body, within the organism. And if you want to get, um, some people may say woo-woo, for me I believe these things, astrologically there can be some something going on in the stars and in the astrological makeup that's impacting an individual, which means it's very difficult for them to progress along towards a certain aim, as Gurdjieff would say. But this is more specifically the food that we take in, just briefly, I won't digress too far, but Gurdjieff says we consume three types of food. He considers the air we breathe to be one type of food, uh, the physical food that we drink, and I suppose you could add water to that. But then he says also our impressions, the impressions that we receive, and this would be anything that we see, hear, taste, touch, smell, even thoughts and feelings would be considered as impressions. And like I say, you should go back and listen to the whole of chapter 9 for context. And now let's get back to this passage. The answer to this is that every normal man has quite enough energy to begin work on himself. It is only necessary to learn how to save the greater part of the energy we possess for useful work instead of wasting it unproductively. And so Gurdjieff is here saying that what he's going to go on to describe is 
unnecessary. It's completely wasting energy. And if you begin to incorporate these ideas into your life, into your days, and you begin to abstain or uh, don't participate in these particular behaviours, you will discover that your energy increases and you do actually have a greater capacity for awareness and self-remembering, which of course is very practical and when one verifies things for themselves, then these things stop just being words on a page that you read or hear me read them and it sort of has real weight and depth to it because you're verifying it for yourself and yes, that is the case. This does happen if I avoid these activities. Energy is spent chiefly on unnecessary and unpleasant emotions, on the expectation of unpleasant things, possible and impossible, on bad moods, on unnecessary haste, nervousness, irritability, imagination, daydreaming and so on. Energy is wasted on the wrong work of centres, on unnecessary tension of the muscles out of all proportion to the work produced, on perpetual chatter which absorbs an enormous amount of energy on the interest continually taken in things happening around us or to other people and having in fact no interest whatever, on the constant waste of the force of attention and so on and so on. And so there is the list of the things that we engage in that suck our energy and I'll go through them individually in a moment and just give a brief comment on how we can, for one, observe that we do these things. We might not even be aware that we participate in these and then maybe how we can, um, yeah, remove them or at the very least reduce them out of our life. In beginning to struggle with all these habitual sides of his life, a man saves an enormous amount of energy and with the help of this energy he can easily begin the work of self-study and self-perfection. And there we hear what Gurdjieff is saying, our aim should be to begin with self-study, study of our machine, of our apparatus for life, and then self-perfection. In um, Yogananda's terminology, that would be uh, Samadhi. In the Greek and Neoplatonist, it would be Gnosis. In Buddhism, maybe Nirvana. But the perfection of the self, and this can only come about through efforts and sort of hard work and discipline, which, yeah, a lot of people aren't interested in these days. They want instant gratification, but the most important things in life require the most work and effort. And so, yeah, let's just go through these quickly, um, and I'll just give um, comment on them. So, unnecessary and unpleasant emotions. There's a lot in all of the Gurdjieff literature around these. He is saying that um, elsewhere in the book, of course, un unpleasant emotions are sort of, it's difficult to control them, they come out, but he's talking about don't express them. You can have your negative emotion, but you don't have to go around complaining about the weather, complaining about what someone done, complaining about this and that. So if you um, conserve that energy, you don't express it, it will give you more energy to work on yourself. Um, on the expectation of unpleasant things, and this would be considered worry. I think there's a great um, quote somewhere that um, worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. It will give you something to do, but it won't get you anywhere. And this is what happens, I find, often with uh, certain people that I engage with. Often what will happen is they'll be very worried about a thing, and it's completely unnecessary because what they were worried about comes to pass and there's no no uh, issue, no thing goes wrong and it's often completely different to what they imagined it. So all that worry um, was completely unnecessary and this is a very good one to observe because, yeah, by observation and verification you realise that, uh, oh, all that worrying, what a waste of energy. So that's highly practical for our observation. Um, Unnecessary haste, rushing around uh, a large issue in today's modern culture. Rush, 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 here, there, everywhere. We've got to be, oh, I haven't got time, I haven't got time, you know. Uh, we need to try and slow things down, but maybe uh, that's for another video. Nervousness, we, uh, yeah, we can be nervous about things similar to, to worry, but sort of our nerves are frayed. And again, another big issue in today's culture. Uh, irritability, 
uh, yeah, I can vouch and say uh, I get irritable at times and that would be my one. And when I am irritable um, a few a few times, just to give a, uh, a fuller example of for myself, for my own observation, I may um, decide or plan to do a video like this or to do some work on the channel. Uh, there's a, an issue of some sort with my children. I become highly irritable and all my energy gets zapped and I'm unable to do a video because I just want to sit down and just, you know, I've got no energy left. So that's, um, yeah, a, an observation from my own life. Uh, imagination, Gurdjieff says that uh, much of our day, much of our lives are spent in imagination, both positive and negative, imagining all these things that we want in our lives, maybe short term and long term. Uh, daydreaming would be uh, under the uh, the same sort of heading, imagination and daydreaming. And the last one I'll talk about is the um, the perpetual chatter, which absorbs an enormous amount of energy. And if you have ever tried to meditate, tried to do some mindful walking, uh, just tried to sit still and quiet, if you can observe this, the space between the thoughts, you'll realise that in a sense, it's perpetual chatter, like he says, constant chatter going on all the time in our minds, and we never have a moment of peace or, or quiet, or peace and quiet would be better to have, to have them both from this chatter, and so that again, it takes a, uh, yeah, a large amount of energy. And one final thing I'll say, that's internal chatter, also uh, external chatter, Gurdjieff in other places talks about unnecessary talking and I found this very helpful because I'd be in groups of people quite often uh, at work or in the Gurdjieff group particularly and um, yeah I just wouldn't say something that I felt was unnecessary and much times as I would often do take this right to the extreme and decide I'm not going to say anything unless someone asks me a question or sort of refers to me in the group Otherwise, what have I got to say? And so I often took these things way out to the extreme. Uh, but again, that's my nature. And it helped me to sort of with my observation and with my own growth and on my own journey. So I hope those things together or one in particular that calls out to you, um, you can begin observing and working with that alongside self-observation and self-remembering in order to increase your capacity for awareness and to, yeah, begin to grow and develop and move towards self-perfection.